it up. It is what it up. What is up? I know. It's, God, it's so early. It's early. We I don't know, I don't we know where you are. Too many times. We rehearsed it happened. too many times. I missed the count. <laughs> All right. So here's the deal. It is the drop. I'm Ruben. This is Quinn. And of course, he has the list. Let's get into it. All right, let's, on, talk baby. Some, let's talk some Texas stuff straight. Yeah, up. man. There's a brand new oh. uh, Gary Clark Jr. record. And this is his uh, fourth full length. It has been a while. And, uh, you know, but he's super visible. You always see him like jump on stage with other people. And and uh, he's got a pretty. Um, yeah, if there are guitars involved. If there's he's guitars involved. He's, he's showing up somewhere. Yep. And, and uh, you know, the heritage players love him because he's like the young guy that's kind of mm -hmm. filling the Moving the blues there, forward. Moving the blues forward. And this is a very blues centric release, but there's also world music, jazz. He also kind of flirts with hip hop a little bit. There's some, uh, some African stuff, but it's still, I think they're doing a good job of still keeping it rock because they really. Warner Brothers has pushed him in a very rock direction, but it's still they're still keeping it. I hate I, the title though. Uh, yeah, I mean that's that's <laughs> fine. Uh, but I think um, I think um, I watched an interview and he was talking about. He goes, you know, I have all these influences, and he goes, I'm kind of in a position right now where I can go in in any of those directions. Yeah, and good for him, man. Yeah, yeah, and we have an indie store exclusive uh, colored vinyl. This is. Uh, is it silver? It's it's the Lone Star edition, and uh, there's only 1,500 copies. Silver vinyl, come to Cactus yeah. and get it, baby. Go to your it's Texas wait, record store. waiting for you. Out. So, good one there. Hey, and you know, one thing we love to do is introduce people to new artists on the drop here. The Last Dinner Party. Uh, this is their album, Prelude to Ecstasy. Good stuff. This is, I think, one of the and you've big... probably already heard it before and didn't know that it's them. This is one of the big breakout bands of the year. It's uh -huh. already huge across the pond, all female uh, rock band. It debuted, the, they had uh, several huge singles. The album debuted number one in the UK. Uh, get ready, they're coming. It's yep. going to be, it's going to be big stuff. here. Now, you're going to hear this again as we move forward in the drop, but the influence of Susie and the Banshees is so pronounced in Permeates this record. Yeah. Throughout the album. And that's a great thing. It's This is a very likable record. Songs are great. Yep. Um, I, I, look for, I, I could, look for this I, to I be, could not agree more. I look for this to be one of the big breakthrough records of the year. Yeah, this finally needs, out. This needs days. to be one of those cactus instruments. Oh man, I'm, they, I'm working when, it hard. When, when, when they come to town, wouldn't that be great? And this is uh, uh, this indie store, uh, Smoky Marble vinyl, and it comes with a poster because, I mean, they're easy on the eyes. You don't want a poster. Oh, of course. Of those ladies in their medieval. Lovely gals, incredibly lingerie? talented. I don't know no, what's no, going no, on this is lingerie. I don't know what that is. I don't, I don't know what I don't know anything is. about fashion. We should we should just move to the next record. We should record. just stick to, this is stick to the vinyl. I like this. Uh, hey, brand new record from Ride. You know, they were just like here in January. One. I saw them. They were fantastic. I like this album. Um, I think, you know, there's there's just a handful of bands that, that take a lot of time off and come back and are as good or even better than what they were doing before. And this is one of those bands. The single's terrific. Um, what did we have last year? Was it the the Slow Dive album? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. same thing. Good same, stuff. same, good stuff. Same, uh, and I think the trick is, I think these guys in that band too, they've all remained friends, and they don't work so much that they get burned out on. Yeah, they doing don't have to do other. this. They don't have to do it. Yeah, uh, but uh, this is their uh, this is their seventh album, and I really kind of think this is the sound of a band at kind of the peak of their powers, you know, and. Uh, uh, maybe the best song. Sometimes I want them to stretch out and the songs be a little longer because that's what they're kind of known for. It's being a little yeah. shoegazy and jammy, mm -hmm. yep, but yep. it's uh, it's pretty tight record. It's, it's good really stuff. good. A uh, great couple of songs straight off that comes out powerful. Great, great opener. Yeah, and I'm hoping they come back and do a uh, 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 full set like a headline show. And you know, I don't because they came with this. they came with Charlton's. They came with Charlton's. Right. You guys, right? And I don't know if you remember this, but they use a little bit of signal processing on the guitars on these records. You just have my a, full attention. Just a little bit. You have my full attention uh, when the pedals appear. Okay, next up we have uh, Julia Holter, uh, which you need to know about her. She's really kind of comes from like the classical uh, side of things. And uh, it, I would say it's experimental pop music, and the cover kind of says that. So as with a lot of – when she was younger um, – she was obsessed with the Beatles and kind of like gave them because she's like a composer and, yeah, and yeah. really kind of working at the edge of uh, the fringes of uh, uh, music and, and, and artistry there that, you know, the obvious stuff kind of gets behind you. But she got became obsessed with them from the Get Back uh, documentary. So um, 
the title, Something in the Room That She Moves, is it. a, is a spin, a play. is a play on the Beatles, and this is a somewhat Beatles inspiring. Once again, the shadow of Susie and the Banshees cast across this record. And, and you've been able to hear that in her other work too, but again, it's pronounced on this. I kind of just love it that Susie's getting all this 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 cred and, and well deserved yeah absolutely but this is a cool record check it out it's really different you haven't heard anything like it i was i it, it took me I, it took me a few songs to kind of under because i don't know anything about her i've never heard her before it took me a few songs to kind of like find out where she was because it could the go space anyway, the right? space that she was kind of yeah. working in and like okay because now i know what to expect yeah yeah i need to go back and listen again ruben what decade is this because we're talking about ride we're talking about the Jesus and Mary Jane. <laughs> All your favorite '80s bands are—they're back, back and they're—they're they're doing it up. And this is this is a solid record. You know, these guys kind of uh, the brothers Reed patched it up and put the put the train back on the put track. Put the band and back been, together, baby. It's been rolling. Uh, Glasgow you got to wonder if, like, when they called each other, they said, "Hey." We're putting the band back together. Yeah. You know, like the classic. Uh, yeah, and um, one of the guys said, "Don't say that." I think they isn't the legend didn't they break up at number like like they like blew up at yeah numbers, like i heard the they left. imploded at numbers i heard that story i don't know that that's true it i don't felt, know that it, it felt is either. like they there was they were they either continued to tour or did something after that this is on transparent red vinyl however. of course it is uh you know uh touring is hard on bands of with brothers in them right and it's, it's just tough in fact <laughs> I would recommend, I would advise against it. You advise against being in a band with your brother? No, just touring oh, with, yeah, with yeah. your brother. Just be like a studio act. Kind of just go the Steely Dan route. Well, so if you're a fan of this band, it's pretty terrific. I yeah. mean, it's, it's definitely they playing up there like, I hear Suicide, I hear Craftwork, I hear, of course, like what they do. But it's very, you know, sometimes these, these heritage acts, they get back together and they're just kind of doing their template. They're doing what Going they do. Going through the motions. There's, there's growth there in uh, artistry. So just check it out. Their 40th anniversary this year. It's crazy. How about that? Yeah, that yeah. It's crazy. Okay. Well, it's sure to be one of my favorite albums of the year. Her last album was my favorite I album really liked this one. Two years yep. ago. I this was is surprised. Sierra Farrell. I liked it a lot. Sierra Farrell, Trail of Flowers. Uh, get ready. This is So this is her third full length. The first one is like totally indie, and I don't even think you can yeah. get it anymore. But um, really, the follow-up to her huge and, and just like slow burn like it sold steadily for two years um uh, her last record and she just has her voice voice is otherworldly the instrumentation is great it's she's the real deal if you want to hear somebody just making great uh bluegrassy americana yeah. country music it's she's for she's, real she's quite the lyricist too and i, oh, I, I, lo is, yeah. I love I love her take on like like dollar bill bars really yeah. really cool and so i think this record was ready to go last year but they didn't want to put it out at the holidays because there's so much stuff out there they waited for the spring good time um, and boy you know so that eddie spear guy that's produced uh chris stapleton and uh oh he worked on this okay. zach bryan and wow. randy carlisle okay. cool, so, cool, cool. so everything's just kind of teed up and again we got a indie store exclusive variant it is Candyland vinyl. Yes. Candyland. If in if you're wondering what Candyland is, it's kind of purple and pink. Okay. So, so there you go. I love that. Um, have you heard this thing? This thing is great. I have heard it. It is wild. So this is the record everybody's talking about. This is the Andre 3000. Uh, for you know him from Outcast. This is his spiritual new age. Yeah. Uh, meditative. And, yes. Um, I, I'm trying to think whatever well, it's progressive. It sounds like progressive rock at times too. Why, if you haven't heard, I guess we just let to let need to let people know that this is about as far away from Outcast as you can. It get. doesn't sound anything like Outcast. You're not it, getting that. But good on him. I, yeah, he did. A, I've seen him do a couple of, of performances. There's been some some live clips that I've seen online. Really cool. Really different. I mean, he's really digging into some different genres of music and spaces and trying things and it's cool i love I, it. I, the last thing i would have expected no yeah yeah right? absolutely and i'll tell you what's kind of funny is you're, you're hearing a lot of hip-hop artists really dig into late 70s like minimalist electronic-y like rock yeah. records and I, I hear that here I, I love that kind of stuff too it's cool to hear him pay it forward and do this and to really just step out there and take a huge chance uh Give it a shot because it is really it's like this meditative spiritual record. I, I totally dig it. Because he could have very easily come out and dropped the next. Oh, absolutely. Right. 
you know, hip hop. He's one of my favorite interview guys. Like whenever there's an interview with him, he's I always was, great. He is awesome. He's, a, he's, he's like great. a bright light, right? He's yeah. like a super positive. Yeah. And and guy. very, very early on established himself as just being a unique artist, both the yeah. clothes, lyrically, you know. What was the the what was the God, the double album? And they both did one side each. The something oh, within, the, yeah, the love uh, within, the love within, the love below. Love below. Yeah, the love below, something like that. That was. That I mean, was, that's that was, It was really that's a, cool. That's a record you got. So on. cool. Um, now for something completely different. New Cody Jinks record. You know, mainstream, but rough hewn country, alternative country guy. I sold two two million records like on his own without a major Isn't record company i love to hear stuff like that yeah, and man. uh he just you know he's truly indie and i think he just connects with fans uh, on a on, on a deep level yeah. and um he's the real deal you know he he plays huge venues and sells tons of records and it's all on his own i love that he's turned down i think every offer to i think do that's something the that new bigger I think that's going to be the new way forward for a lot of people. If yeah. you can pull it off, I if mean, if you can pull it off, you got to have that groundswell of support yeah, from fans. Absolutely, this guy does. absolutely. And, and fans have been expecting this record for a while, so they're flipping out. Um, talk about expecting a record for a while. About time we got a new Shakira record, right? How beautiful is the cover art on this? I love it. And this is she for, had a like a personal life thing that she had to take time time away from. I might think. be, I think might that be. Was I do not deal. know that story. But she is a superpower, uh, a, you know, a freaking supernova in in Latin America, obviously. Oh, yeah. And, and crossed over to the to uh, American pop stardom. So yeah, I think this one will do well. And this is her twelfth record. Las mujeres ya no lloran. The women no longer cry. Oh, I like that. That's a great translation. Title. Yeah. I'm good for something. You got Not it, just man. holding you got it. You got it. Uh, <laughs> so this is her 12th album. And, you know, she's been teasing. She's been putting out singles along and along. So you get pretty much like, you buy this thing, you get seven, like, bona fide huge hits plus uh, the rest. of You know, it's always interesting when there, when there's a bunch of singles in advance to hear how they, they uh, fill out the record to make it, like, conceptual or whatever they're trying to say. I got some guests on there. You got Carol, uh, oh, G, Carol G, who's everywhere, Carol right? Carol G is everywhere. absolutely everywhere. everywhere. Cardi B. If you're making a record, Carol G knows it, and she's going to show up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, did you listen to this record? Have you heard this thing? No, I didn't. This thing is kooky crazy. This is the Mesthetics. This is their second album. It's the Mesthetics and the James Brandon Lewis. It's their second album, but it's the first on Impulse, which is you know John, labeled known for John Coltrane and other artists. This is uh, self-described by them as DC experimental jazz punk, and that's what it is. You have two members of the rhythm section from Fugazi yep. on this record, and um, um, it's cool. It's I need different. To check this one out for yeah, sure. it's 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 a cool record. Um, it's kind of uh, not to let the cat out of the bag, but it definitely. Uh, so the instrumentation you get the rhythm section and guitar and saxophone, which is always interesting how those two things come together. Uh, I would say that the kind of determining factor in, in listening to this record is it is recorded like a rock record. You know, it's not like that old school sound of a room kind of thing. Right. Uh, it's very te technical sounding and well engineered. At times it almost sounds like they're plugged into the board instead of you know, right, using right, mics. Right, but, right. Uh, but if that's your thing, I, I think it's worth it's worth a listen just to um, if you're if you're a fan of uh, uh, Fugazi to check it out because it's it's very it's very cool that they took this left turn. I love that. Yeah. And the packaging's good because it looks like a classic, like uh, a classic John Coltrane record, like right? Classic album, yeah. Love yeah, that. Yeah. Love it, love it, love it. I don't, I've never, what, who's, what label's Impulse? Who's, who's, uh, it's through Universal, but it was, Universal. but, but okay. it was, you know, like everything that was, a, that you see a logo of was an was, indie at some point. Was you know? absorbed. Yep. They grow through acquisition. Mm, uh, this is one right. of my favorite bands. They have a career retrospective documentary and live album that spans from the very beginning of the band to just like last year. And this is uh, live through the past Darkly. It's a uh, the Dream Syndicate, uh, Paisley great band. Underground Band, Paisley Underground. the great Steve Wynn. Very um, what drew me to them initially is like very kind of Velvet Underground, New Young inspired, torn from your soul kind of guitar mm -hmm. stuff with an emphasis of uh, feeling over. Um, you know the technical aspect, but they've uh, they've been through a lot of lineup changes, and it's kind of cool to get this beginning to now 
um, retrospective of them. And they had a previous documentary about 20 years ago that was basically them breaking up on the road. Yeah. Uh, and this, but this is more of like a, a, a classic doc that tells the story of the band. So, um, and, and they're one of those groups that got back together. They found the right, lead guitar player to kind of fill things out and they're as good as they ever were sadly have not been back to houston in their four uh, albums in this month that, too. Is, that is a show that i would yeah, go see i know it. yeah I'll, absolutely 100 percent all right um all right we're, we're gonna wind up the new release portion of the program with um talking about a brand new pop artist that i think is just going to be huge this is tyla and she uh, she won the Grammy this year for um, best African performance, and you know so she had a worldwide hit in 2019 um, called "Getting Late," and she's only 22 years old. She's from South Africa, from Johannesburg, and uh, really kind of broke out worldwide, and then got signed to Sony. And this is her this is her debut record. Some of these tracks have been out and about, and you've heard them, but uh, obviously Sony is. Uh, they're betting the bank on that. They think this record's going to be huge, and, and a lot of people do. Yeah, translucent uh, orange with red swirls vinyl. How about that? Oh, like so, um, yeah. so already starting to hear lots of things about her, obviously, and uh, quite the list of people on here: Travis Scott, Marshmello, Becky G. You know, not shabby. So yeah, is Carol like G you said, on there? Carol G is not on Damn. here. That's I've only well because I, that's that's African. Yeah, I only here. spotted the one G. <laughs> <laughs> nice thank nice. you nice okay you. uh ruben let's talk about some reissues and let's talk about like let's do it crazy texas bands and come on reissue let's go and i didn't ask you what can we say about this on the we can we can yeah right. it's the name of the band all right so yes. we got uh this band's catalog has been unavailable for many years and it just or available sporadically but now it's all there they put all their catalog with the matador label now you can get all of their uh great Super weird records by the Butthole Surfers mm -hmm. available. Um, you know, uh, this is in Ruben and my like sweet spot. Like we saw these guys at the, you know, when they were just huge and crazy, and it was you never knew what to expect. It, and was, it was always super it was weird. It was chaos. Uh, it was chaos, it was absolute chaos on stage. Chaos, and these records are genuinely weird. I I don't even really know. You know, I always make a few notes like how to describe. Like I don't know how to describe this. It's just psychedelic indie weirdness yeah i mean there was there's obviously that whole kind of punk diy thing happening but mm -hmm. it was you know out of austin texas and just you know gibby haynes and his cast of you know lunatic uh yeah. carnies just yeah a carny carny is a great word <laughs> yeah. for it um and and you know it was just they had a few songs that they would and the weirdest play. thing in the world is that they had a hit with uh hit with pepper, pepper. yeah and they would use all these visuals at this which show, sounded so nothing, nothing like, like the rest that, of the catalog no, no. that probably still pays for a full um, speed on their ranch wayne from uh flaming lips tells this incredible story of, of like he was so obsessed with them that he he basically wanted his that a lot of the flaming lips were influenced directly oh, by butthole yeah. surfers kind of music and what they did on stage and mm -hmm. he knew there had to be a visual element and he you know he he wanted to make like crazy weird processed sounds and yeah yeah so anyway that's there good. you go yeah, yeah. yeah Wayne and Coyne. and that's everything that Ruben said that's what a little surfer show was and yep. the records were you know weird audio samplings and, and the live shows with all these crazy visuals i remember like watching what the was shows, the, like what what am i looking at wasn't what there like this? a liberty lunch show or something and like gibby came on stage with a shotgun or something he like maybe, fired a gun on stage maybe. <laughs> Who knows? But genuinely, one of the weirdest Texas bands ever. And, and we are God known bless for, them. We are known for weird bands. God we, bless them. It's we've great. produced a few. It's great that these records are available Amen. again. And uh, come get them, kids. Come get them. Come Play get it for your parents. And um, and some of them are, are the, like they did the first run of like a thousand on different colored vinyl, so love you it. can pick love those it. up, and love then it. they'll, they'll continue to be available. Love All it. right, let's talk about another great band from the same era that redefined. <laughs> rock music you know the records is a classic example of a band that the amount of records they sold in no way uh uh gives you an insight no. into how influential they were and this is there the big is, boys okay so there i'm gonna so there are people that i knew and still know in the music scene that it's like 
claim to have seen like the first big boys show. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that 90% of the people that say they were there were not there. It's like yeah, yeah. the Sex Pistols thing, you know? Right. Anyway, but so they uh, big boys. Yeah, the big boys. And this is, uh, you know, and a lot of really talented guys came out of this band. You know, Tim Kerr uh, and uh, Chris Gates that went on to form a, bu I mean, a bunch of other bands. And then, of course, yeah. Biscuit was the singer. But really, if you're not familiar with him, what you need to know is, you can draw, you can take the big boys and draw a direct line to what the Red Hot Chili Peppers did. That funky punk rock. Totally. Uh, it starts with these guys, and a lot of people are really kind of sour on it. When they when they when Peppers broke, yeah, we're sour on them. Like, what? What's this been copying the big boys for? Yeah. Um, and then Biscuit passed away. And then Biscuit passed yeah. away. So there, so so there you go. But these are you have to hear these records. This got this got one of my favorite titles. No matter how long the line is at the cafeteria, there's always a seat. Oh. Um, but there, these are you got to hear these records. They're super influential and cool. And it's a Texas thing. And uh, you know, check it out again. These it's are on blue uh, vinyl limited, one thousand yeah, copies only. This one's purple. I got the purple one. This is. Uh, and in almost all these, they, they all feature biscuits artwork. So right? each one is a limited edition of one thousand. Yeah, for the and colored then, vinyl. And then they'll come back as a black That's vinyl crazy. later too. So um, yeah, check it out. You get you get some uh, reissued Texas music of great importance to check out. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And this is going to be my pre-ramble to talking about like get ready, all come record on. store day is coming on. Let's go on the twentieth of Let's go. April, and this will just whet your appetite. This Let's is a go. RSD essential. This is. His, this is the Misfits. This is their collection one that really has all their the early singles and then tracks from the, the first, I think, two full lengths through, through Earth AD. Uh, all the stuff that the kids love. How many times have we said influential in the last 18 minutes? That's quite a few. And you know what? Jesus. It is Wait, rare that we what get... What is happening? We, we get a glow Is in this the dark happening final. live? We're opening it. Oh, somebody... So it looks Dude. it looks white now, but when you, you just know, wait, people bright just green. wait, it's just bright wait. Green. Yeah, it's kind of starting to do that. Uh, but anyways, <sighs> so this has been available as a regular piece, but you can only get the 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 glow in the dark limited edition vinyls only available at indie record stores, and for a limited time only. It's already. I'm glad that shelves. even you have trouble putting it back in the sleeve like, it's like that. Static Who invented these things? I know. It's ridiculous. I mean, look at this. And as the story goes, weren't Metallica kind of responsible for renewing the interest in the Misfits because they were they were the first guys oh. I remember wearing the T-shirts, right? Like the giants, the skulls. Well, definitely they found a whole new audience with the with the yeah garage. yeah. And people were like yes, trying yeah. to, and but even before that, I remember because I remember seeing those shirts and I was like, some Misfits, you yeah, know? right, right, and. And where did you get that cool shirt? Because you just couldn't go online and order it. But like, yeah, that's nuts, man. Yeah, and and you know, for for people of a certain age like me and Ruben, me? like yeah, like we, you know, we're we're Ramones guys. We're we're uh, first generation punk guys. But really, for people that are ten years younger, this is the band. This is the like Listen, huge band. Yeah, and I I still know people that. To this day, we'll we'll fight you over it. if you say anything negative about the Misfits. Deny their position. Oh yeah. All right. So we're gonna let, we're gonna end here. Let's with go the, with the Granddaddy Rocker. This Bring is it. Deep Purple Machine Head, one of my Dear favorite God. albums of all time. This is the Deep Purple 50th Dear Lord anniversary in edition. You get concerts from you get, you get remastered. You get concerts. You get rare tracks. You get the Blu-ray audio, no a quad mix. Um, this top to bottom is People, one of the greatest hard rock records. Of educate all time. yourselves if you Highway don't star, know, get this. You probably heard smoke on the water once get or twice. This. If you're not sure what it sounds like, go to any music instrument store yeah. and stand there for five somebody's minutes. Gonna play, somebody yeah, play somebody's somebody's gonna play it. Um, and uh, space trucking. Uh, and so they they use this using the original multi track master tapes, which were apparently stored very well to do uh, uh upgraded um mixes of uh, of this record and, and we're kind of fortunate that you know they're they're fixing all this stuff for posterity they know that these guys are getting older they're they're not going to be with us for all that this is their pretty much their last chance to make stuff sound as great as it's going to sound for posterity and that's and that's why we're getting all these great releases but um there's a ton of stuff in here brother this is loaded with and of goodies. course Rhino Records, so it's always always quality, loaded, always loaded, quality, loaded with goodies. Um, okay, 
It's time. It's time for the vinyl vault. It's, it's time. Yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah. Again, and thanks to our, our incredible art department and animation team for that. Uh, all right, guys. So <laughs> this, this is one of my favorite albums of all time. It is also an incredibly polarizing and controversial it is. album. Yep. Boom. It is The Bad Brains uh, Quickness. So this is one of those albums that when this came out, Bad Brains fans that were of the band in DC mm -hmm. era were like, it's not even Bad Brains. This right. is garbage. Yep. It's metal. It's trash. What are they doing? And for me, that could not be farther from the truth because I think that everything they were that first time, you know, you see, you've seen the great video from CBGBs and the photographs right. with, you know, uh, HR launching himself into the crowd. And um, yeah, I mean, that was this incredible punk moment in time, but all of that DNA is here. Yeah, for sure. You know, and nobody, and also, if I'm not mistaken, Mackie from the Chromags played drums on this. Earl did not. Um, it's giving it more of a harder rock, hardcore it, yeah. sound. But like nobody writes in, in their entire history, Nobody writes riffs like Dr. No on the guitar. It's, it's, it's not, and there's, and God knows I love a good two or three chord punk song, but just their melodicism, their sense of their harmonic knowledge, you know, Daryl Jennifer, incredible bass lines, HR is just like vocally sounded like he was being murdered at any given point. Um, Soulcraft, Incredible Voyage to Infinity. There's not a bad, the problem is there isn't a song on here that's not killer and produced by the mighty Ron St. Germain, who at this time could not have been a hotter producer for anything that was heavy. Like well, that was- What was he doing about this time? Uh, what do you mean? No, I mean like, what was he doing? Like what would he- Oh God, I, I, I don't want to start naming bands and then somebody be like, no, he wasn't on that. Okay. But like a lot of, a lot of, a lot of stuff. So anyway, uh, let's see, what do we have? Remastered by Dave Garner, blah, 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 blah. There's nothing colorful or anything on here, but I'm telling you, if you haven't heard this and you're a Bad Brains fan and because somebody told you this isn't the good Bad Brains, they are lying to you. This album crushes it crushes and i remember when it came out and and i had i had a and i hadn't heard it yet but i had talked to you know friends like oh man i really don't like it it's like it's not um because you know i think you kind of had punk punk fans and then you had bad brains fans you know that's sure it crossed a little bit but there were people that didn't really like all the punk stuff but like bad brains like what they stood for yeah but this it just like turns them into a machine like it just tightens I think, all the screws and it yeah just i think there's a lot of people so that's hard. like banned into c and then after rock for light they're like nope yeah right 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 <laughs> you, you and, know and, and that's it's, it with punk that's it, it with punk bands and, and hard rock bands in general yeah. like they want you to stay in your lane and that is not artistry you have to grow you have to do something different you have to you know progress and you know what People are going to hate you if you stay the same, and people are going to hate you if you do something. Like, yeah. so you might as well follow and the, your and muse. And these guys absolutely did not care, <laughs> whatever you happen. thought. Well, so, and when I finally did hear this record, my my buddy Larry yeah. had, had bought it, and you could not get into his car for like three months without hearing. Yeah, blasting. With the quick, yeah. With the quick yeah. it was like his yeah. favorite yeah. jam. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, it's, it's, it's a killer killer record but not the one that like you're saying not the one everybody reaches for. right exactly soulcraft i mean you 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 come out with a better heavy opener to an album let me know what it is all right guys we have reached the end of uh the drop coming up next week lots more good stuff and we are counting down to record store day we it's going to be huge big announcement coming from yeah. from the cactus world uh headquarters on that i'm ruben that's quinn we're going to see you next time peace we're out of here That was our quickest, like, stop it. Oh, yeah, right on. I'm a professional. I do yeah, this.